Hey guys, it's me, your old pal Cinnable here, and I have a notebook with me, but not just any notebook. I'm going to reveal something pretty awesome. So, me and my dad are going to start a website. And, by the way, if you're wondering why me and my abusive dad, they're just skits. I hope most of you know that. Anyway, so, we're starting a website, and there, and you can buy audiobooks of books outright. And this is my first one that I'm going to release an audiobook of. It's a communist book called The Fish Rising. And if you get a little peek at the cover, there's a little fish with a hammer and sickle on it. I also gave myself a pen name, Oliver Snitchell, um, just to look a bit more official. And yeah, I just wanted to announce that. And I'm going to give you a little treat, a sneak peek of the introduction. I'm going to read it. Comrades, speak up. Of course they'll get hate. People can be dumb. Fish. Get out of the water for a moment. The capitalist piggy banks must be stopped, whether you're socialist, Leninist, etc. And that's the introduction, and yeah. Hey guys, your Just old pal Cenable here, uh, and I want to make a video about why, to this day, after the time in history when, when it was founded, we still need communism. Uh. Now, for any of you who don't know, communism is the idea of a nation sharing the wealth. And while some people call it distributing, um, if I were to ever start a country with a communist government, wink, wink, wait 12 years, um, I'd probably make it, like, have these company, like, these buildings which you can put in money for other people to have. You know, kind of a share-share. Now, I know not all communist states are like this, but still, distributing is just as fine as sharing it. Well, I'm not explaining why we need communism. I'm just giving the difference between distributing. Because they technically are. Because, hey, a parent could make their child share a toy or something. Anyway, now on to why we actually need communism. Like, actually, it's cold out here. Um, I have two reasons. One, poor people, sh we really can't have poor people. It's not good for a bunch of, for like a whole class of people to be poor. People need money. We can't just let people or be around just be homeless, homeless because as they can't get jobs. Money is important, so that's another reason we need communism. And secondly, some people might say, oh, we have welfare. Welfare just promotes lazy people. And I don't know, I, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure welfare, especially down in the United States, costs a bit of moolah. So yeah, all those morons saying that communism is the same as welfare, you can go leave because you are just an absolute moron. Just look up the definition of that. I'm sorry I got a little heated, but when people say it's the same as welfare, I get really angry. Anyway, yeah, that's why we still need communism. Bye. Hey guys, so as you can see, I'm wearing red. And what color is a certain, and what is associated with red? It's a certain political belief called communism. And I kind of identify as a communist in my political beliefs. Um, so, one, th and here are reasons why. 
although first I'm going to give a very good disclaimer. I do not support the actions of people like Joseph Stalin, Burrell Gorgipop, however you say his name. Those people I do not support. What I support is the idea of communism and the idea of a nation sharing the wealth. That's the thing that I support. And, uh, excuse me. Yeah, um, and there is many things. Um, first of all, okay, so, before you leave your dislike and say, How could you be a communist? Communism is evil! How many times... Okay, I just... I want you to remember, I do not support the actions of people like Joseph Stalin. Um, but... And now I'm going to talk about why I support that idea. Just imagine a, imagine a nation where only the rich have the money, they hog it all, and they never give it to the poor. Would you want to live in that nation? I don't think so. So that's so that's why it's awesome for a nation to share the money instead of just hogging it all for for themselves. And I see no uh, economical uh, consequences in that. So yeah, that's kind of another thing about communism that's really cool. Also, the symbols are just fr freaking cool. It's similar to my petty reason for being a vegetarian. It's fun to say the word vegetarian. Anyway, I'm going to go now uh, because my camera is really low. Uh, bye, guys. Hey, guys. <coughs> Excuse me. It's me, Dan Cranach, and this is a little treat that I'm going to talk about. Something you don't see a lot on my channel. A talk about communism. Now, the re now someone brought up a point on my video coming out as communist. <sighs> coming out, I hate that term. Um, about, uh, and... Uh, and the point is very uneducated, and I have two things against the point. And basically, this is a parody to the Spinning Man. And basically, I'm just gonna talk about the point. Um, and bring two good points against this certain point. Now, the point is that if people work for their money, they deserve it, which is true. But commun but first of all, poor people aren't always just lazy. Some of them don't have access to jobs, or they were born into poor families. And they're under 21 and they haven't moved out yet. Or ever will move out because they're so poor. See what I mean there? Now my second point is that um, communism isn't about taking away money, it's about sharing money. Um, well, sort. It's about taking away some money, but giving it to others as well. And that's basically all I have to say about that comment, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this treat. video on about why capitalism, the thing that so many Americans worship like it's the whole way of life, life is unfair. See, when the proletarians think that the working class is work so hard collecting those berries or, or building those shelves. We're building those water bottles, we're making those water bottles so you can drink out of them. Yet, a lot of the money that they make off of that goes to the bourgeoisie. And that's basically capitalism. And I hope most people can see how unfair that system is. And, but with communism, the Polkatarians still get their money. And
and w whether it's tax money or actual force, the tax money will be, distributed, will be redistributed with the poor who need money and might not be able to get jobs. It's pretty simple like that. Boom. And with that money, they could buy nice clothes for a job interview so they can get money. It's pretty simple. And yeah, that's why communism is fair. But capitalism is unfair. And if you still aren't convinced, then you're just a terrible human being and bye. Hey guys, your old pal Cenable here. And we're going to talk about how communism can work. Now, a common question many communists are asked is, where does the money generate from? And that's a good question. Whether it's aggressive or a, uh, ha, huh, you, you can't answer that one, or just an actual dire question, I, I'm glad to answer this. Now, there is a certain variant of communism, which I guess all my fans, I'll come up with a name for them, can call Cenobalism, I guess. And basically, it's a variant of communism where the government will use tax money to create jobs at the, at the official government offices that won't involve politics or stuff, not stuff like that. Like being a chef to the poli to the prime minister or president or king or any other thing, and or or sweeping up the floor, taking care of the building, any of those jobs they get to choose, they will be paid for, and they'll have a job, and eventually they'll have money for a job they want, and boom there will be less poor people. It actually very much works. And if anyone, and if any poor people refuses these jobs, fine, they're poor then. And that's a good variant of communism, which can definitely work. I literally see no consequences or anything bad that can happen with just hiring poor people to work with the government, not necessarily in, po in politics, and them getting paid with tax money that people have paid with. Simple. Bah! Hey guys, Cenable here, and I have to get this weight off my chest about Christianity and all other the religions which claim that if you aren't a, if you aren't Christian or Muslim or whatever, you're gonna burn. Now, I want to focus specifically on Christianity for this one. No other reason but then that's the but then that's the one that most people can kind of think about when they come to this one. But let's say an, a Christian stole a diamond, committed a school shooting, and beat and fractured the bones of a puppy. Ew. Um, but then an atheist donated to charity almost every month, worked at the soup kitchen, and was an animal rights, and was a woman's right advocate. I don't know why I changed it. But he was an atheist, so God will send him to burn. Now, Christians say God is so moral, and everything he does is fine. But when he would send someone who worked at the soup kitchen to burn for all eternity because he didn't believe in Jesus, but he would burn, but he would grant heaven to someone who believed on Jesus, even if they molested seven children. And that just does not sound too kind for any god to do. And if you want to claim he's moral, you have to give an explanation for that. And it's unforgivable to burn someone who was a woman's right to advocate for all eternity because they didn't believe in you. Anyway, that's just something I needed to talk about. The Bible is a theory. 
A lot of Christians might listen to that and think that I'm just someone who wants to escape from sin and his accountability. But no, the Bible is a sin. Sorry, it's a theory. It is nothing more than a theory. A theory. That's all it is. A theory. Now I'll stop repeating myself and talk about my stances. The Bible is a theory. It's a theory with so little evidence. Read the Bible. There's so much that you'd have to be a Greek god to speak of and be 100% certain of it. Stuff like striped cattle, a talking snake, so many things that prove the Bible is just a big, long, Two Testament, 66 book long theory. And I'm not excluding the Quran. The Quran is a theory. A lot of Muslims might hear that and think I'm someone who just wants to escape accountability for my wrongdoings. But no, almost all holy books are theories. They're all just theories. And they all have so much weirdness in them that it's hard not to think they are just a theory. Theory. Fear E. Two syllables. Excuse me. Again, yeah, excuse me. The Bible and the Quran. They both are just things that are theories. I'm an agnostic. And you can be an agnostic too. It's good to be an agnostic. Being agnostic means you can be free from the theory of the Bible. It means you don't have to live your life afraid of what could exist, but only afraid of what bad things could happen in the one life that is proven to exist. This is why the Bible is a theory. All it is is stuff that is unproven. It's all stuff made to make people scared to live the life in ways they might want to and live their life a scared and afraid robot like the Skylanders. Or any other robot, honestly. That's all it is. A theory made to control people.